The D5500 has a slightly redesigned body that's a hair smaller, and the camera also has a few new features, including it now has touch on its flip and twist LCD. Overall, though, it remains a great choice for typical family photography. I'm Laurie Grunin for CNET, and this is the Nikon D5500. Although it's not as compact as Canon's old SL1, the D5500 is still quite small and lightweight. Part of the design tweaks, however, is a grip with the same drawback as the SL1s. It has a pronounced overhang that now forces your hand down the grip more. It's not a problem for someone with medium-sized hands like mine, but big-handed folks will find their hands uncomfortably overshooting the grip on the bottom. Otherwise, the rest of the body is quite straightforward to use and very similar to its cheaper sibling, the D3300. It does have a couple extra buttons and switches, though. The camera still delivers excellent performance for both still and continuous shooting. It also has some of the best battery life in its price class. The feature set isn't quite as novel as it was when the D5300 shipped, but it still covers all the bases for its target user. New over the D5300 are super vivid pop and photo illustration filters. It also has nice perks like interval shooting, though it doesn't have any in-camera time-lapse movie creation. And it has in-camera HDR, two shots. It also has Wi-Fi, but Nikon's app remains lame. Finally, if you plan to shoot video using autofocus, don't buy the collapsible kit lens. It's one of the noisiest lenses I've ever tried to shoot video with. If you can find the D5300 for less money, there aren't enough differences to justify paying more for the D5500, and you're better off spending the difference on a better lens. However, the D5500 is still an excellent camera. I do recommend that you grip it first before you buy.